As travel by rail became more and more popular, it became clear to railway companies that they needed better ways of keeping their passengers comfortable. In warmer weather, the carriages were usually fine to ride in, but in winter, their wooden bodies meant they were about as warm and comfy as an old garden shed. As such, railway companies had to come up with many different solutions to try and keep their passengers nice and cozy. In the very early days of steam in Europe, because of how bare bones the carriages were, all passengers could do to keep warm in winter conditions was just bundle up, bring a blanket, or wear another coat. Eventually, the railways took responsibility for keeping their passengers warm by providing carpets and blankets to those who requested them at stations, and later, hot water bottles. Around the 1860s, foot warmers were incorporated into many carriage designs, usually first class. These came in many different shapes and sizes, but were essentially long metal boxes that would be filled with either boiling water or hot sand and placed under the carriage seats. Little hatches were installed in the sides of carriages to allow workers to easily take them in and out should a passenger request one or ask for theirs to be refilled. Later designs involved filling the boxes with sodium acetate, which could maintain a temperature of 55 degrees Celsius for several hours, while others used fire bricks stored under the carriage frames with small vents leading into the coach to let the hot air in. In America and other countries that used more open-plan corridor carriages, heating them was much more of a challenge, especially on much longer train journeys. Most carriages just had a small stove that burned either wood or coal fitted in the corner. However, these weren't the best at keeping everyone aboard warm, as it usually ended up with one end of the carriage being piping hot while the other end was still freezing cold. Not to mention that the passengers or the guard would have to keep stoking the fire, and how much of a fire hazard these stoves were when the main body of the carriage they were in was primarily made out of wood. For most railway companies, it was a very difficult task to come up with a practical heating solution for their carriages, and often, many passengers found themselves experiencing very frigid journeys, especially in countries that experience intense cold during winter. The public, however, failed to understand the technical complexities of heating a carriage with the available technology of the time, and as such felt the railway company were ignoring their needs. What didn't help was the many contemporary cartoonists, who used this fact to take jabs at the railway companies, further fueling the contempt from the public. Eventually, the idea came to some designers that, hey, there's a great big boiler at the front of the train, why not use some of the heat from that? And so, by the late 1800s, many railways developed a sort of radiator system, where steam from the locomotive's boiler would be fed through pipes fitted under the floor of the carriages. This would keep them heated and remove the need for staff to maintain fires or keep refilling water bottles. Pullman was one of the first major carriage builders to incorporate the underfloor heating design in the 1860s. However, this steam heating system didn't take off in the UK and parts of Europe until the late 1880s. The steam system also had its own problems too, as not only did it take a long time for the steam to properly heat the very end carriage of the train, but the high-pressure steam being pumped directly from the boiler was notorious dangerous. In 1903, Chicago businessman Egbert Gold produced a system that used much lower pressure steam to heat the carriages, which was much safer, and as such practically became the universal means of heating carriages for many railroads. The system was so effective, carriages were still being built with steam heating well until the 1960s. At this point, many railways were starting to use diesel power instead of steam, which then led to the problem of where they were going to get the steam from to heat the carriages with. In the UK, the solution was to install boilers into various passenger diesels, which would burn diesel oil to produce the steam required to heat the carriages. These, however, often proved to be faulty, not to mention the fact that the locomotive would have to remain stationary while waiting for the carriages to heat up something that prior steam locomotives had to do, but they could use that time to build up boiler pressure ready for the journey, whereas diesel locomotives had no need. American railroads often employed purpose-built heater cars for this reason, older carriages or rolling stock that had been fitted with a steam generator to produce the steam needed to heat the rest of the train, so that diesels could just pick up the train and go without having to waste time idling to warm up the coaches. Because of how unreliable the diesel boilers were, some regions of British 
railways followed suit and converted old goods vans into dedicated steam generators to fulfill a similar purpose. This, of course, was only a temporary solution as most railways focused on upgrading their carriages to electric heating instead of steam. All the same, it wasn't until the 1990s when the last steam heated carriage was taken out of service on British rails, with many preserved carriages on heritage lines still using steam heating. So, next time you're traveling in a nice warm train, take a moment to remind yourself that it took an awful lot of trial and error for you to have such a comfy journey, and that, more importantly, not every simple problem has an equally simple solution. Subscribe for more.